Another week, another video on JK Rowling, the gift that keeps on giving to the YouTube algorithm. I do honestly apologize for constantly making videos about JK Rowling and her views on transgender people, but this week, something honestly rather small to be admitted uh, came up, but I think it highlights a larger issue with how many, and I include myself in that, have framed and discussed these recurring issues when it comes to celebrities and those with larger platforms who receive criticism for being transphobic. So I am mostly going to be using JK Rowling as a specific example here in this video, but it's really going to be going after a larger trend that I've seen that goes beyond JK Rowling herself. And what's that trend that I've successfully teased you enough about? Well, I want to talk about how we frame and discuss online abuse, and who receives the most empathy from us discussing it for when we talk about celebrities accused of transphobia. That is to say, how we almost exclusively focus on the harassment and abuse leveled at the celebrities using their platforms to the exclusion or diminishment of all others. And to be honest with all of you, this was a topic that I had been thinking about doing for a while, but I definitively decided to do a video on this with the recent news that Fantastic Beast star Eddie Redmayne wrote a personal letter to JK Rowling to share his sympathies towards her for the quote-unquote his words vitriol that Rowling had endured via social media both before, during, and after her recent essay confirming her views on transgender people. Abusement and harassment that JK Rowling herself opened up about within that aforementioned essay. Now, this abuse that JK Rowling and I am talking about is this harassment that many celebrities, in this case JK Rowling, but many celebrities have faced from transgender people and allies of trans people who send that harassment towards a celebrity, often at even the hint of potential leanings towards trans transphobic or anti-transgender sentiment or thought or active support of those ideas. As Rowling herself wrote in her essay, quote, quote, all the time I've been researching and learning, accusations and threats from trans activists have been bubbling in my Twitter timeline. This was initially triggered by a like, and a persistent low level of harassment began. Immediately, activists who clearly believe themselves to be good, kind, and progressive people swarmed back into my timeline, assuming a right to police my speech, accuse me of hatred, and call me misogynistic slurs, and, above all, as everyone involved in this debate will know, turf. Now, we're going to set aside that last point that J.K. Rowling was starting to get into at the end of that statement, the idea of turf being a slur. Uh, I've discussed that topic in another video I did that also goes a lot into the specifics of J.K. Rowling's views and why I find them problematic or harmful towards trans people in general, so I'll link that up here and down below. And also, the wonderful feminist writer Judith Butler did a fantastic interview recently about turfs and J.K. Rowling that touched upon that subject, and Butler did a better job discussing it than I ever could. So Again, I'll link both to my video and that interview down below. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out Judith Butler's interview because it goes into some really, really fascinating stuff that all touch upon the same topic that we're going to be touching here, as well as further beyond it. But for the case of this video, while I do agree that turf should be called turfs, as it would be a distraction for our discussion here, I will refer to what we call TERFs normally as gender critical feminists for the duration of this video. Though I do have many issues with that term, but I'm trying to focus our conversation on the topic at hand. But honing in and explaining for our discussion, basically, as J.K. Rowling started to research trans issues and started to show even simple support for groups typically associated with anti-transgender viewpoints, many trans people and trans allies started to harass Rowling online, which, as I've discussed, often starts a cycle where the abuse only further entrenches that person in their anti-transgender views, pushing them further into more polarized thought because even if there are good-natured criticisms and attempts to reach out to that person in good faith discussion, which there are many times often a ton more than the harassment being leveled at them, the person who is being harassed understandably focuses on the harassment leveled at them because it's harmful and horrible and can be mentally damaging and also the thing that is most egregious in their eyes. So they also then tend to side with people who are actively welcoming them, typically those whose views they are receiving harassment for. In J.K. Rowling's case, it was gender-critical feminists who embraced her with open arms. Again, as Rowling stated in her essay, quote, what I didn't expect in the aftermath of my cancellation was the avalanche of emails and letters that came showering down upon me, the overwhelming majority of which were positive, grateful, and supportive. They came from a cross-section of kind, empathetic, and intelligent people, some of them working in fields dealing with gender dysphoria and trans people who are all deeply concerned about the way a social political concept is influencing politics, medical practice, and safeguarding. They're worried about the dangers to young people, gay people, and about the erosions of women's and girls' rights. 
while I am being trying to be generous to JK Rowling, I will say I will uh, note that she doesn't give specifics on how many people or how many of those people work in those fields that she's uh, sort of uplifting them and say, like, look, they have legitimate things. And we're also not even getting into the fact that there are a lot of problems with the way gender critical feminists have used uh, science and academia, especially in the UK, to push their views. That being said, though, the point, again, for this video, I just want to briefly mention that stuff because it is there and a thing I am aware of, but also it's somewhat not relevant to this discussion, but I at least want to mention it. But for our video, the kindness that J.K. Rowling felt was from those who either held views similar to gender-critical feminists or were themselves gender-critical feminists, and thus she became more likely to side with them because she was receiving positive enforcement from them. And while I am talking about J.K. Rowling here, I've talked about how similar cycles have occurred with other celebrities in recent days like William Shatner and Gina Carano, and they're by no means the only ones that have felt this cycle. Nor is it exclusive to transgender issues. It comes up with, you know, politics, left versus right, uh, homophobia, uh, you know, uh, racial issues, things like that. It's no by, this dynamic is no by means exclusive to transphobia, but we're going to talk about it in a trans context here. So here is where we've set up a really interesting framing device though, and that's what I really wanted to talk about. Because by the very nature of this discussion, we are talking about the harassment and abuse that one person, in this case J.K. Rowling, has faced. And I understand and empathize with her position. I emphatically believe that no one should be receiving online harassment or death threats or doxing or anything of that level, regardless of what I think about their views and if those views are harmful or not in my opinion. There are ways to go about criticizing someone without harassing them, but unfortunately, social media and a lot of today's polarized discourse sadly encourages more hyperbolic and over-the-top statements because social media allows you to dehumanize the person you're talking to, seeing them only as an avatar online and not a human being who will read and potentially feel emotional pain at your words, as well as social media in general, as well as our polarized discourse, promoting more hyperbolic statements because they're just inherently more interesting to the human psyche. Even more so, even outside of social media, humans tend to remember the more critical negative comments even amongst thousands of positive ones. So given all of that, and from J.K. Rowling's own essay on the subject, we can tell that the harassment and abuse towards J.K. Rowling, as well as other celebrities who have gone through this, like I mentioned Shatner and Carano, was probably vicious, over the top, and probably really felt harmful to them on a personal level, something that they had to deal with mentally, and maybe even had to go and see a therapist or talk with someone a friend about, because they were facing so much abuse. And understandably, I think most of us empathize with her in the face of that abuse, regardless of if we agree with her on trans topics or not. I mean, I certainly do. My heart goes out to her. And so did Eddie Redmayne when he wrote J.K. Rowling that letter. Eddie Redmayne was a kind, caring human being who wanted to reach out and care for another human being who was his boss and possibly even his friend, even if he disagreed with her, which, given the fact that Redmayne quickly released a public statement in support of trans people after J.K. Rowling released her essay, we can probably assume that he at least doesn't fully agree with her stances on trans people. But we all can understandably relate to J.K. Rowling's suffering of abuse there. But here's the thing. This whole time, this discussion of J.K. Rowling is framed on her facing harassment and abuse. This whole conversation is prefaced and predicated on explaining and empathizing with Rowling's hurt, humanizing her, no one else. Rowling herself does this in her own essay, spending the first half of the essay just discussing the harassment she faced before she even gets into discussing her explicit views on trans people. That's the framing device. It causes us to sympathize with her before we even hear the meat of what she has to say, the actual point she's trying to make, and makes us more likely to side with her when she does because she has been framed, both by the media and in her own essay, as the main and sometimes even sole victim of the situation. And look at any video I've done on Gina Carano, William Shatner, and J.K. Rowling, and others, and you'll see tons of comments that reflect this very fact. I see comments in my videos of, I sympathize with J.K. Rowling, or, those trans activists are so horrible for attacking J.K. Rowling, or, quote, it's disgusting what they did with her. And again, all those reactions are understandable. We feel for her because of the abuse she faced. The abuse she faced was not right, as I've said. But it also paints all trans people as the perpetrators of that harm done towards J.K. Rowling, villainizing an entire side of the argument in order to show Rowling as the hero, the reasonable, understandable one in all of this, and that her side of the argument, gender-critical feminists, for example, as just being victims in all of this. And that is definitively not the case. As much as I've condemned people who leveled harassment at J.K. Rowling and understand the harassment that J.K. Rowling has faced and empathize with it, trans people as a group also face much the same and sometimes even more. 
According to a study by the National Resource Center of Domestic Violence, 76% of transgender youth face abuse at school. 31% saying that that abuse comes from people of authority, like principals or teachers, people that they have that are above them leveling this abuse at them. People who they're supposed to look up to and learn from, telling them that they are wrong or disgusting or are something off about them. 50%, that's half. One in two transgender people have experienced sexual violence in their lives, which is larger than the 33% of non-transgender women, i.e. cisgender women, who face abuse. Nearly 46% of transgender adults have been verbally harassed in the past year, and 90% in their entire lifetime. And 10% of transgender people have been physically assaulted just within the last year of when that study was done. And while the study didn't track this, I suspect the number of harassed people increases when it comes to online spaces. Again, going to the idea of you viewing someone as more of an avatar than an actual human being, and also the polarized discourse of our entire country and world right now. And this is only anecdotal, but I, as an out trans woman with a, even a small, nominal platform, receive regular abuse online for being transgender. I literally, on every single video I do, and I mean every single video I do, even ones where I'm not even talking about transgender issues, I mean, it's a Star Trek review, boo, it's nothing to do with me being trans. But I will receive several harassing comments from me being transgender on every single video. And I'm not talking about people who may disagree with me on transgender issues in a way that I think will be harmful to the transgender community. Because those comments, while I take issue with them, are usually coming from people who are well-intentioned and want to have a good discussion, even if I think their words may unintentionally be harmful and reflect what I think will be a transphobic or harmful viewpoint. No, what I'm actually talking about are people who just come into my comments to try to hurt me for being transgender. Comments like, and these are comments that I'm reading verbatim, these are actual comments that I've gotten. I'm not putting them on screen because I don't want to give them much credence or let them know who they are, that I picked them out, or that I read their comments, but these are verbatim comments. You can just look in any video to find ones like this. Quote, why don't you just shut your face, degenerate? You're disgusting. Quote, hey, Jesse, you're a dumb fuck. You're just a whiny, disgusting looking man. Quote, why is this man dressed as a woman? Disgusting. Quote, you're a man. Deal with it, you cancer. And those are just some of the low-level ones that I've received. I've gotten many direct messages that my parents are horrible people for raising me, that I'm mentally ill, or that I should even just die. One notable person even invited me to Russia so they, quote, could be legally protected if they were to kill me. Fun stuff. It's a lot of fun. And just to be clear, that doesn't really affect me. I've received it so much that I've kind of become numb to it and honestly just laugh it off. It, it's honestly kind of, to be fair, it's honestly kind of funny how many people say the same exact thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's to the point where it's just like, yeah, I, I, I can't even view it as a real thing anymore. But it kind of goes to the whole point that I'm making, by the way. But this is just stuff that I faced online. I've gotten stuff in person that is much, much worse, such as a time where a person followed me around a mall while I was shopping, yelling, it's a man, it's a man, to the point where I had to leave the mall, and no one stopped him the entire time I was there. And that was in Los Angeles, which is a generally trans-affirming city on the whole. I can't even imagine how horrible it must be for trans people in less friendly cities on a regular basis. Now, all of that is stuff that I've actually faced, and I'm sure that some of you, and I would hope that most of you, would understand and feel for me for how disgusting it is to have to see and face that abuse. But I don't share those comments or those stories to garner sympathy from any of you. I share them because this is what it is like to be a trans person in any space, especially in online spaces today. We receive regular harassment just for being trans, and especially if we're vocal to any degree about any sort of trans issues, which, considering we're trans, many of us feel an impetus to do. And just like J.K. Rowling, I could use that to paint every single person who disagrees with me as a horrible people intent on trying to hurt me personally for who I am. But that's not the case. It's not that easy. There are people who disagree with me who want to have a good discussion, who are good people, Hell, I'm even sure there are people who harass me, who send me this disgusting stuff, who are, on the whole, generally good people. And they send the harassment because they're dealing with their own crap, which is a point that I'm going to get to. But the people that I just disagree with, while I think that their views may ultimately be harmful to the transgender community as a whole, I don't hate or view that person who holds those views as intrinsically mean-spirited or hateful. There are numerous reasons why someone would hold that view, or even would level harassment at me. Again, it's something that I don't condone and think is horrible, but there are times where I understand where it comes from, even though I condemn it. 
It can come from lack of education. It can come from abuse they face themselves, as was the case with J.K. Rowling. Lack of exposure to trans people or education, or simply not agreeing with me, or simply needing a place to vent. And I, again, I am viewed as a personality, of uh, someone who doesn't even exist as a person to them, so they're just like, yeah, I'll rant in the comments, or I'll disagree with them on viewpoints. And that last one, the one where I said a lack of exposure to trans people or education on trans people is the one that I find the most sad because I feel like the more you understand facts, the more you understand about J.K. Rowling's views, the more you can understand how they can be insidiously, even if unintentionally, harmful to both trans people and women as a whole, not just trans women. And I've done a whole video breaking all that stuff down, so check it out again. It's the one I referenced before down in the down below. But even though I find that sad, I also have to allow for the fact that some people just simply won't agree with me. Which, again, is sad and honestly a bit scary, but I also don't believe that those people are intentionally hateful or trying to hurt me. So that's why I don't paint the entire side of people who disagree with me as malicious, evil people intent on trying to hurt me, and my side as completely innocent of any wrongdoing. But that's what J.K. Rowling does with her essay. She paints her side as innocent and herself as a victim, and that's it. Not complicit or uh, shades of gray in any way. For example, in her essay, J.K. Rowling brings up the case of Maya Forstarter, a tax specialist in the UK who was not rehired, and it should be clear that she was just not rehired, not fired as J.K. Rowling implies, for what were deemed to be transphobic tweets. But Rowling frames Forstarter as losing her job, as well as other gender-critical personalities that she mentions, as just victims of transgender ideology, only fired for stating that things like biology exist. But what Forstarter actually did, if you look into the case, and again I discussed this in my other video, was repeatedly misgender, harass, and abuse trans people in person and online. Maya Forstarter was not completely innocent in her case, even if you agree with her overall idea that biology exists and that trans ideology somehow hurts women. She did way more than just state that. But J.K. Rowling mentions none of that because it is not in her interest to do so. It suits her argument better if you view her and Maya Forstarter as solely victims to make it a very clear, simple case of black and white. But that is not true. And by the way, no trans person denies that biology exists. As I've said many times before, I most likely have XY chromosomes, though I've never actually checked, and I'm not ignorant of basic biology and science. And again, basic biology and science, but again, that's a whole other issue. And I will not deny that J.K. Rowling is a victim. She has suffered abuse in all of this, and it is regrettable. But as should be clear, her victimhood does not mean that she is the only victim. We tend to frame discussions in binary ways. If one person or one side is a victim, then the other side must be the aggressor, and there is no gray area. And that's always, almost always, patently false. And what's more, and what does frustrate me, and I understand that I have been in small ways complicit in this in some of my other videos, is that we focus on J.K. Rowling's hurt and pain to the exclusion of all else. That's how she herself has framed it and how she wants it. Using her history of abuse, both for when she came out in line with gender-critical ideals, as well as using the domestic abuse she faced years ago, even before all of this, even before she became a famous author. She uses that in order to gain sympathy. And again, these are things that I am totally empathetic to, and I renounce that she ever had to face it. My heart goes out to her for facing that. I can even talk about things where I know what that feels like in my own life. But it's not only her pain. We focus on J.K. Rowling's suffering, of which I understand and appreciate, but we tend to focus on that and only nominally reference the suffering of trans people. It's an asterisk in the whole conversation. It was as if Rowling's pain is somehow way more important or more meaningful than hundreds or thousands of trans people. Again, that's how Rowling's framed the whole argument. That trans people's equality would somehow come at the expense of cis women's, of her equality. And that is also not true. I've talked about it in my other video on the specifics of it. But to protect and help trans women and all trans people not only helps trans people, but all women and everybody, even beyond women, trans or not. You see, while I spoke about how trans people do face a ton of abuse for being trans, so too do women face abuse for being women. And trans women face both abuse for being trans and abuse for being women. Both J.K. Rowling and trans people as a whole, and women as a whole, trans or not, are victims in all of this in some way or another. But we can also victimize each other. And we tend to use our place as victims to protect ourselves from criticism, to not, you know, recognize our own complicity in some things, intentionally or otherwise. But as I said in another video, you are not allowed to use your pain as a marginalized person as a weapon against another even more marginalized group. 
J.K. Rowling, and I don't think she does this intentionally, again, I'm trying to give her the best possible intent, to read the best possible intent into her actions, but J.K. Rowling, and I don't think she does this intentionally, is wielding her pain both as a victim of online harassment and, in a whole other ball of wax that it's worth its own video, her trauma as a victim of domestic violence, in a way that allows her to have control over it, to use it against someone else. Coming after trans people probably feels cathartic because it's a battle she can conceivably win, something she can do in her lifetime. Because trans people, despite how powerfully she framed us in her essay as this torrential Twitter mob with tons of power in the world and able to influence the ideology of everyone, have very little power to affect politics and the real world and our own suffering. J.K. Rowling's voice can therefore influence events, as they already have with politicians in the UK and the US citing her in anti-trans legislation and can make her and cisgender women who feel like they have suffered are finally fighting it back against something that hurt them. It gives them that sense of control, of ability that they can do something. But in actuality, they're doing just the opposite because they're pushing down trans people who will be and can be your allies in the fight against oppression of womanhood, trans or not, as well as all marginalized groups. The best way to deal with pain is not to lash out or try to put down others who are more vulnerable than you, even if it may give you an immediate sense that you can control and change things. The way to deal with it is to reach out to those who understand your pain because we have felt it in our own way, and stand together in the fight against marginalization. That fight, though, is something much harder to win, and sometimes feels incredibly futile. So I understand why it's hard to accept that long road journey, when the road that gives you the most immediate sense of power and purpose is right there. But it ultimately harms both trans people and women in general, and in the end, makes us both weaker. So I end on this note. J.K. Rowling is a victim of abuse and harassment. But that doesn't mean that trans people are not as well. And her abuse and victimhood does not excuse her from doing the same to others, even if her intention is not to do so. So while I empathize with J.K. Rowling, as well as any other celebrity who faces abuse, they're the ones with the power and platform. And if they wish to use that platform outside of just fun celebrity stuff, they have a responsibility to use it properly and towards people who actually do the harm, not use it to gain a sense of control by harming those who are even more marginalized than themselves. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know that was sort of a longer rant, but uh, it was sort of delving into a bunch of different issues that I wanted to touch on. And I know it was sort of instigated by like the nominalist small thing of like, Eddie Redmayne's letter, but I, I really think this was an important discussion to have. I really would love to hear all of your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more discussions of trans issues or LGBTQ issues or larger political and social issues in geek and pop culture. That's all here on this channel. Uh, what else? I also have a Patreon if you want to help support me and get yourself cool perks like uh, getting your name in videos or uh, access to exclusive podcasts that I do over there um, and also just keep up to date with all the news that I do um, and I think that's everything subscribe comment patreon all that random stuff that I do uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you as always live long and prosper Thank you so much to all of my patrons especially Ashley Allen Bokikio, Miranda Janelle, Eli Berg Moss, Ashlyn Solstice, Christina Dalliance, Greg Gillum Stephen Clinard, Munir Amlani, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Wayne Twitchell, Ish the Mad, Buttoneer, Randy Thompson, Jemshin, Lorena Mesa, Mari Neckar, Wellington Marcus, John Steele, Michael Beam, William Stewart, Gavin Robinson, Jason Knott, Maeve, Sabraxis, Tonya Trummer, Wen Dizzle Bizzle, Gretchen Badger, Dante St. James, Polly Mina, Pissed and Twisted Garage, and Bree Beecher. Thank you all so much for your continued support.